Well, welcome back to Finance Uncut. On today's episode, silver's shocking true price revealed. In one of my recent videos I did, I shared this chart, which to me proved the manipulation happening in the gold market, uh, the during hours and after hours sessions. Well, Francis Hunt has shared some amazing charts which show the amount of manipulation in silver and what its true price should probably be. Something that should be examined uh, really closely is the following. And I, I, I'm surprised more people don't talk about this. Um, so this will play to those that are open to the fact that there's certain degrees of uh, manipulation. Um, as I say, we're not trying to get cranky here, but there's certainly something that needs to be answered here. And I'm just going to maximize this so that it's nice and clear for you. There's three lines on there. The silver price um, is the uh, red line. But it is an aggregate. It is broken down by two sub, uh, two different lines. Uh, these two lines are buying at the open in the American session and selling at the close. And then the other one is buying at the close, holding overnight till the next open and closing. So that is your 24-hour silver market split into two. So you're actually getting two opposing charts of relative performance. And the question I have to ask about this is how is it that buying at the close of the American, the blue line, New York overnight silver index based at 100 right back in 1970, guys. This isn't a once-off fluke. We're talking about the 50-year fluke that if you did this, and I'm almost irritated I haven't got a bot on out there doing exactly this and compounding silver ounces for me, um, is your gold value, and I will take this into log scale later, but I just needed you to see the regular scale to see the absolute difference and variance in performance than the guy who buys the American Open and sells the close. He gets absolutely destroyed, the black line. So the red line is actually the aggregated summary of the black line and the blue line. That is your silver price um, and the split into two sessions. So for me, it's become quite clear that there's a certain degree of a discount window for a certain time zone that occurs. Um, you don't get flukes or coincidences that last for 50 years. It is non-random. It is statistically significant. I defy anybody who understands probabilities and permutations to just tell me um, anything otherwise. If we just look at that with a log scale so that you can actually see the values on that chart, because this is probably one of the most interesting, uh, I think, revelations that can be brought out uh, for your show, is that once we, de once, once we put it in a log scale, you can actually see those values. I'll again just make it a tad bigger for uh, presentation purposes. So one number starts at 100 in 1970 and has taken you well through 10,000 on the way to 11. The other that started at 100 is barely above 10, has lost 90% of its value. And it's the same commodity, just bought at different times. That is insane. And that gives you your aggregated return so far for silver. What's going on? Why does one half of the planet sell the paper price down and the other half utilize that? I'm assuming for potentially purchasing in real markets. So on a more, so I've, I've spoken on the macro. I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell you what you want to hear on the smaller time frames. Uh, I'm afraid to say I want to be the guy that brings good news. Technically, um, I think there's still scope for a, a little stab down um, on silver. Uh, we are in a bit of a ascending triangle, um, and we had quite an abrupt uh, rejection at the 28 at the last time. So this is with the supposed narrative um, of the Federal Reserve doing a taper and cutting uh, back balance sheets and various other things. That to me is a fake narrative. Um, they won't be able to do anything meaningful on any sustained basis. But for now, they will currently potentially create some degree of deflationary concern, um, which is adverse for precious metals. So short term, um, I think you should treat this as an accumulation window. The one thing that has shown as a clear area of, of support, as I'm looking at the chart with the other eye, 
is if you can get at around 23 to 24 range and even up to 24, 24 and a half on dip downs, that just proves sensible accumulation zone. That, uh, I'm not going, I'm not calling that the 28 falls just yet because technically it doesn't look like it. Um, that said, Gold has done slightly better on its recent form. We're, you know, we're talking now it's the 12th of July. If I look at the gold chart, it's managed to reclaim the 1800s after its slap in the face post the, the Fed announcements, which I think is a little bit of an overreaction and a bit of optimism by Wall Street. But, you know, maybe they seize those narratives to suppress the market a little bit. Who knows? Um, but uh, the gold-silver ratio is actually creeping up slightly. Um, but this is a kind of a counter-trend rally in what is a major corrective down. The, so I'm all my optimism I'm going to give the people are more on the medium and long term. Can I say, the bigger the move to the upside on the gold-silver ratio, the greater the subsequent reaction to the downside. And I wouldn't put it past the possibility, this is someone who said you might get single-digit oil. You could just make a dip under the 10 and get a single-digit gold-silver ratio if we had the, the, the fullness of the move was allowed to play out. Your last gold silver bull market was a truncated one. One of the charts I showed you just show, you could see it didn't go anywhere near as far as um, the 80s, the late 70s into the early 80s uh, in terms of progress. So the fact that we've gone so far and got such a distortion shows how everything's become financialized. And if you hold the long term, this could be very, very uh, beneficial. And often the suppression to the downside will cause a mania, hyper emotion, and you could actually get single digit gold silver ratio, which could see, you know, quite big numbers, triple digits for silver uh, and gold, uh, you know, say three, four, five and beyond um, in that amount. So both bullish for both of them, but particularly silver. So the long term, stay the course. Short term, you're not going to get immediate gratification right now from me just yet. So it's clear to me that we do not have the true price of both gold and silver. Now we can speculate as to why this is. Uh, our central banks, our big banks and other institutions manipulating the price down so that they can accumulate it while it's cheap. Uh, that's the belief of Jim Rickards and many others. Uh, it could well be, I don't know. What I find really interesting in this chart is if you see 1934 when it became illegal to own gold all the way through to about the time where it was then, you know, legal to own gold again, we had this huge period of uh, negative real yields um, right when the time you wanted to own gold uh, you weren't allowed to own gold and you know have a look over here we've been going uh, negative as well in fact we are we're down negative again and so you know this might be the time that you want to accumulate gold if it is being manipulated down by the central banks and big bullion banks and and institutions so that they can acquire the physical then perhaps maybe we should follow suit as well. You now, Russell Napier talks about financial pressure a lot. Lynn Alden talks about the comparison between the 1940s and now uh, with debt levels similar uh, in, in, in negative real rates. So remember that the annual CPI rate throughout the 1940s there, we had uh, several big spikes in CPI. And uh, in the late 40s, uh, CPI got up to 19%. And so uh, what we will have though is uh, every time that spike uh, starts coming down, you know, we'll have uh, the manipulators out there saying that, uh, yes, this is disinflation or deflation time now. Um, but we're going to have, uh, you know, negative real rates and, and, you know, financial repression. I think that's very clear to me. And uh, in that sense, it makes sense to, to own the assets that the central banks are buying. And this chart just shows it very clear that the financial repression or the, or the loss of purchasing power by investing in treasuries. Uh, had you put $10,000 uh, at the beginning of the 1940s uh, to the end of the 1940s, uh, sure, nominal growth, you got a little bit there. But when adjusted for inflation, you lost purchasing power. You went backwards over the whole decade. 
And the same can be said in the 1970s. Uh, so, you know, prior to, you know, what's that, 1968 there, all the way through to 1981. So that's quite a long period of time. Had you invested $10,000 in US Treasuries? Yeah, sure, nominal growth. Uh, you know, you've got 17, uh, nearly $18,000 there. But when adjusted for inflation, you're actually punished even more than in the 1940s. Uh, where you know you've you're, you've lost purchasing power, and this is where Lynn uh, talks about you know similar debt levels uh, to World War II as a as a percentage of GDP, uh, but this is from the Congressional Budget Office. And have a look at the projected federal debt uh, as a percentage of GDP. It's it's only expected to go up, and this is what I'm saying is, uh, you know. Forget the whether we get a bit of uh, tapering or a bit of uh, you know uh, asset price crash and and then they you know put the pedal to the floor in terms of uh, creating new currency units and creating larger and larger deficits. Um, look, it doesn't matter in that short term uh, thing. We know that according to the Congressional Budget Office that governments are going to increase their deficit spending. And who are going to buy the bonds? Well, that's the big question. Are central banks just going to monetize it? You know, or, or are the government going to force uh, particular institutions and, and pension funds or, or whatever to, to buy these bonds and, and get a negative real uh, return and, and lose purchasing power? Uh, this is what Russell Napier talks about a lot. Um, yeah, so for me, I mean, makes sense. Gold and silver, the, the real assets, commodities makes sense. And look, you'll hear a lot of talk about uh, lumber prices coming off and this uh, commodity coming off. And, you know, it's, it's once again, the deflationists and the propagandists and, the, you know, the, the, the manipulators out there that are just spreading all that. But when you actually look at a commodity index, uh, look at that. It's, it's the highest it's been for 10 years. Uh, commodity uh, in general uh, are going up. And this is a sign of inflation. And uh, look, yeah, sure, it might have its dips down. But we know that we are moving towards central planning. We know that... Uh, you know, MMT uh, is here, uh, that UBI is around the corner, uh, that we're going to have central planning. So we're going to find that uh, we get uh, misallocation of resources, uh, malinvestments. We know the production uh, in the economy is not going to improve. In fact, it's going to go backwards with central planning. That's been proven time and time again. Uh, while at the same time, we're going to create new currency units, more currency units uh, being pumped into the economy, whether it's through UBI or through whatever programs they want to do. And so for me, that the, the gold silver story, the commodities, the real assets you know, and the analog. And this is the other thing. As we move to a digitized world and the whole electrification of the economy, I mean, You know, it, it's the sophisticated uh, investors that will do well. It's the, uh, you know, those who are educated that will do well. I feel for a lot of my friends and family, I feel for, for a lot of the ordinary, hardworking men and women who are just wanting to, just wanting to work hard and, and raise a family and, and have a good life. They're the ones who are going to be hurt the most because they don't understand inflation. They don't understand what the, what the governments are doing. Uh, you know, they're sending out this, oh, you can have free this, free that. Nothing is free. You will pay the inflation tax. And and it's those people that don't have the assets and, and diversification into commodities and gold and silver and, and real assets that protect against this inflation tax. And, and it makes me really, really mad. And that's why I do this channel, to, to really just, just educate, just put, put this out there, just share my opinions. You know, nothing on this channel is, is financial advice, but it's just sharing my opinion, sharing what's going on, sharing 
so that hopefully you guys watch this and that you share it with your friends and family uh, so that they're protected. Now, I don't need to do this. You know, if I want to be selfish, I, I can just keep doing what I'm doing. But I'm just passionate. I, I, you know, I, I read uh, G. Edward Griffin's The Creature from Jekyll Island nearly 20 years ago now, and that just blew my mind wide open. And if you haven't read it, folks, read it. It's all about the history of central banking, and in particular the Fed, The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. I'll put a link in the description below. Anyway, guys, that's me going on for, for a rant. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys agree? Um, obviously, you know, gold and silver has been manipulated and continues to do so. We can speculate as to why, uh, whether that's to fool the public that there is no inflation, because if gold and silver absolutely skyrocket, then that's saying something about the dollar, right? The, the, the fiat currency. Or, or is it manipulated so that so that the, the elite can continue to buy the actual physical. Um, whatever it is, uh, it still makes sense to me to protect against the debasement of the currencies because that is going to con continue. That's, that's something I feel pretty confident on. So guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Give us a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, do so and hit that notification bell. Anyway, guys, take care. And I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.